All right, hold on, let me admit one other person. So Dr. Sherman, Welcome. I have a question yeah. real quick. Go ahead, Krista. Okay, so Stella has a habit of creating a Google slide and she inserts her picture, but then it, I'm getting notices that she hasn't turned in the assignment. When I go back into that assignment and I pull it up and I pull up the slide, it's there. So I realized in the last 24 hours that there's a turn in button she has to go back to after that point. Does that make sense? I mean, yes. And, and Crystal, I'm that's my next thing. My, yeah. Okay, never mind. That, okay. That's where I'm going next. That's my next bullet. So I just finished calendar okay. and showing you that. So let me go to an actual assignment and walk through that. And I think I'll answer that question for you, Crystal. Okay. All right. So let's go to an actual assignment. Um, here's the, what the classroom looks like. The stream is literally a place that's used as like a Facebook post for wall or whatever, just announcements. We're not really putting assignments there or whatever, but you will see on the left-hand side, if you do click on a classroom, uh, that it gives you the upcoming things that are coming up. And it has a view all button here, which will just take you back to that to-do list and show you what's assigned for that class. Um, but let's go to the classwork and let's pull up an assignment here that I have as the demonstration assignment. Um, and this is what it looks like when you just see the assignment from here and you could actually click on this document and go that route. I'm actually going to click on this view assignment button, which I don't think many of us are using. Um, and it takes you to this page. And when you get to this page, this is what you want to see. You can see that I have the access to get to her work. I have the access to actually add another document so I could add some Google Slides as Krista referenced, uh, maybe for my, my presentation. But I also have this turn in button. Now the turn in button is literally just a marker. It doesn't do anything special other than alert the teacher that you're ready for this to be graded. And it also locks you out of that document for editing purposes. So once you hit turn in, you can't edit your document unless you unsubmit it, which is perfectly fine to unsubmit if you want to make a change to it and then resubmit it. Um, there's no problem with that. But this turn in button, I think, is what a lot of us are missing. And then it looks like our assignment hasn't been submitted uh, or hasn't been completed. Now, I will say that from the teacher standpoint, it doesn't matter if you hit that turn in button. I can still go and see your document. I can go in there and grade it. I can do whatever. But it does alert the teacher that, hey, I've worked on this and I'm ready for you to take a look at it. I've submitted it. Um, so I think that's the button that a lot of us are missing. And it's right here, but it's also in another spot. So let me let me talk about this page a little bit more, and then I'll show you where else you can turn in assignments. Welcome, Lisa. Um, where else you could turn in assignments? So first thing, if they have a question, there's a class comment right here um, at the bottom, and that will go out to everyone. So if it's like, hey, I'm confused about the date here. What day is this to? Like, that's a general question. If it's a more personal question, like, hey, can I have an extra day on this? Or what do you think about this picture I submitted? That needs to go on the private comments over on the right-hand side. So there's two different places that your scholar can make comments, one public, one private, just to the teacher. Um, all right, so now let me go in and go to this document. And just please paste a photo of yourself and they can post it in here. Notice in the top right hand button is a our top right hand is a turn in button. It does the same thing as that other button on the assignment page, but it's embedded in this Google Doc. Now it is not embedded in Google Slides or spreadsheets. It's just in Google Docs. I don't um, see a document. Does anyone else not see? I just see a screen. See the same screen. Were you supposed? Were you sharing a different? Oh, I'm yeah. I'm page. in a yeah. This is just one I created for today. Sorry. I'm, I'm just doing a demonstration assignment here. Sorry, so no, I, I, you, thought, I thought maybe you opened the Google Doc. I'm sorry. I thought you were referencing a different I, something that was on screen. I did. You guys can't see it. Hold on. Let me share that tab. Is that working for you, Brian? There. I'm sorry. There you go. I apologize. Yeah, you were right, Brian. I was. Uh, so this turn in button in the top right does the same thing as that assignment page. So it might be easier for your scholar when they're putting stuff in to just hit turn in at this page. 
So either one of those is fine. Again, it just alerts the teacher that, hey, I've, I'm done with this. I'm ready for you to look at it. If they don't hit the turn in from the teacher standpoint, it just looks like they haven't touched the assignment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the button. All right. And it's going to say, do you want to turn this in? And notice that it brought me back. Um, to that assignment page. This is that assignment page we started on. So it's literally just a, a quick link that brings you back and acts like you hit this turn in button. Um, and once I hit turn in, then it's going to lock me out of that document. I'm not going to turn it in for our, our sake, um, but it'll pop up on here and say resubmit. Actually, let me just do it. We'll turn it in. And now you'll see here the unsubmit button. So if you log into your scholar and go to the assignment and it says unsubmit, you can guarantee that they've already submitted it um, and that they've turned that in. If I hit unsubmit, yeah, I'm, I'm there. Sorry. Popped over. All right. So now it says unsubmit here. And so if you see that, that's a, a, a sign that your scholar has submitted that assignment and it's, it's good to go. If, if you go back to this document, um, it's not going to allow you um, to edit this. I can't, I can't do anything on this screen. It's a view only. So if you get to a, a document and it's view only and they're like, I can't do anything with it, you just have to go back to the assignment page here and hit unsubmit. And if I unsubmit it, it just takes me back to that same place I was before and now I can work on the document again and turn it in again. Again, that won't cause any problems. There's no like deadlines and, you know, that kind of thing. In a high school setting, then they use that as a way to lock in assignments when there is a deadline uh, that they're working on. All right. Any questions on this uh, page, marking things as done or turned in? So I guess going back and putting this in with the missing assignment emails, if they don't hit turn in, does it show up as missing? Yes. If they do okay. not hit turn in, it's going to show up as that assignment is missing. Or if it's so not then, past the due date, it'll just say it's due on whatever day it is. Okay. So then under the to do, will it still appear like I went back to the to do? So it will appear under missing on their to do list as yes. missing. And then I know that she hasn't hit turn in. Is that yes. right? So yeah, if you come to missing and then you click on the assignment, it's going to take you to that assignment page. Okay. Um, and then you can see, like, I can view Alexis's slides. I don't know if she did them or not. Um, and if I see that she did them, I can hit turn in or she can okay. hit turn in and that'll alert the teacher. And then I'll take it off of the missing and put it into the turned in pile okay. or the done. Now, like, yeah. I just pulled up one of Stella's and it says it's missing. But when I pulled the Google Doc, it says you've already responded. Um, sorry. <laughs> the doc said, uh, like, is it a form? Is so it, a Google it looks form? like, yes. So when I went into the missing assignment, it was supposed to be a Google doc form to be turned in. Yeah. So let me, let me talk about those specifically, Krista, because there's okay. a way that these, sorry. Talks, yeah, that's okay. That That's a good question. And I have one in my thing here. Um, so I made the lunch and learn question a Google form. Um, and I just made it a material. I probably should have made it a question. But what happens with a Google form is, uh, let me just go ahead and make a demonstration because this will this will help solve some of the problems that you guys are having. So I need to go back to my other tab here. I'm going to change this from a material to an actual question. Oh, let's not do that. Um, so a material is just when something is given to you, like a video to watch. There's nothing to do other than watch it, or it may be some notes that the note slides that the teacher had. But when it's an actual assignment and we add a Google form, find it. there we go. Demonstration. All right. Now I'm going to come back over and now I'm sharing from the student side. You'll see the demonstration form up here. Um, so now it has this form and has view assignment 
and I'm just gonna put in my email. Oh, let's share a tab. You guys can see. And I think this is the frustration a lot of you are having, and I have an answer to it for you today. Um, how do I do a form? So when I hit submit here, it's gonna say response submitted, um, and even it'll send me an email, et cetera. For this one, I have it set to where we could submit multiple responses. Some of our teachers are having ability to do so submit another response. Some of them are marking that they only can do one response. If they mark that you can only do one response, if I try to go back here, it would tell me I've already filled out this form. Since it's not marked, I can still um, submit another response. But when I go back to the assignment, it's now saying that it's submitted here because I, I had put this with the assignment. What's happening with some of them is previously Google didn't uh, have these linked. This is actually a new feature within the last like maybe a month um, that they've run this. Um, so it's showing turned in, but previously it would just have the turn in button just like it was another document. So let me go back to the one we were playing in. Can you show that? I didn't see the, um... It's the screen yeah. still showing lunch and learn response submitted in the oh, I'm mark sorry. Done. Here it is. Thanks, Brian. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, so it's showing it submitted. And previously, it looked like the other assignment. So I want to go back to uh, just the, the assignment with the Google Doc, and I'll show you what it was doing previously. They've gotten got it to where it will talk, but previously this was not happening. Um, so what you were getting previously was this only it had the Google form here and it still had the turn in. You still had to hit mark as done. Um, and so let's say I delete this document. Well, I don't know, but if I want to add a Google slide now, okay, there's not going to be a turn in button until I have that added into my work. So now I have to hit the turn in. But if I go to a Google slide, you'll notice that the turn in button is not up here, right? The same thing was happening with Google Forms. There was no button. Um, and so you had to manually hit submit. So my suggestion is if you think that you've submitted a form already and it's still marked as not done, to just go into that assignment um, tab that looks like this and mark turn in. And that will alert the teacher that you've submitted it. Um, and it'll take it off of your missing assignments. And it'll put it back to the teacher to go in and grade that and, and submit a uh, score for it. Um, I hope that cleared it up a little bit. What I will say is that Google Classroom is continually changing. And they're adding new things and, and getting better. Um, and so that was one of the, the problems that we were having. And we've that's been like a three-year issue for me as a teacher. Um, but it looks like they've cleared that up and you are now able to just submit the form and it will show that you have completed uh, that assignment. Um, I feel like there was a, a question in the chat. So let me get there and make sure I've answered it. Um, yes, if you're doing Flipgrid, Kim, you will have to go in and hit turn in or submitted mark as done. Um, is what was showing there previously. I'm not sure if they took that language away and just have turn in. But yes, anything um, that is not a Google Doc um, or if you just come to this assignment page, I, th I think that's your best bet um, in terms of what's happening is to come back to the actual assignment, uh, not here, um, view this assignment and then hit the turn in button. Now on the page we were just on, this classwork page, now you can see the turned in um, as well for a quick check there. Um, so if you're just going through your assignment pages and you want to see what's happening, I haven't done this question yet. Um, and so that's kind of a walkthrough there. All right. Any questions? I'm going to move on to like a survey question. Um, and then I think I'm finished with the assignments part of this. Okay. So 
this is just a question I posed so you guys can see the little um, icon. And for this one, the scholar just has to type an answer. Now, what ends up a lot of times is they want to answer right here because it, it falls right under the question. And then it makes it as a class comment. And then it doesn't post it as being turned in. So they may have posted a class comment, um, but they did not actually type their answer. Um, what's for lunch? Okay. So now once they do that and hit turned in, it'll show turned in. And if you go back um, to the classwork page, you'll now see it turned in. Um, what I wanted to show you here also was sometimes our, our teachers will allow them to edit answers so they can go back and fix an incorrect answer. Um, you would just click on the edit button here um, and then you could turn it in again. Um, or you can also see your classmate answers and there's not going to be any today, but sometimes there are questions where we want to see what everybody else put or it might be a poll question. Um, they can click right there um, and see the answers. So. It's all under the same format, just a little bit different way of handling things there. But you can see the turn in button is in the same location. Um, and that may be what's holding them up. Maybe they posted an answer here in the comments and did not put it in the actual question. All right. All right, I think that's it. Um, this icon with the notebook is an assignment. This is a material post. Um, and this is a question post. So I think I went in here. This is actually the assignment from um, from the uh, outdoor STEM class, right? Two of the ways you can take care of plants. And you'll notice this one has no work attached. Um, and it says I turned it in late. So I'm just going to hit unsubmit. And then if I was doing this, uh, two ways to take care, I would just add a, a document, a Google Doc here. Um, and I'll create one with my name on it, which is awesome. So has my name, week nine assignment, water them, and make sure they have sun sunlight. And then when I'm finished, just hit turn in. Yes, please. Um, and then this was the week nine assignments. So I can go in here and you'll now see that it says it's in the done pile uh, for my scholar and it's not on the missing. All right. I didn't talk too much about the stream, but you guys can see every time I do something, it puts it in the stream. Uh, so if your scholar. Don't see um, it. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. If your scholar does you something or is assigned something or posted new material, it'll pop up in the, the stream. Um, so those are that's where all your teachers are posting um, their announcements for the day um, or special links uh, to get to different places happens in the stream. Um, your people tab should just show your teachers. This email button does not work um, because our scholars are not on Gmail. And this is a direct link to Gmail. So I'm sorry, but this will not work for you. All right. That's it from this end or this student perspective of Google Classroom. I have two more things. I want to show you the Guardian email. And I also want to show you how to take pictures or videos with your Chromebook. Um, because that's one of the vital things right now um, that we're having some issues with. All right. So the first thing, if you want to receive an email of your scholars work either daily or weekly, you can do that. In order to do that, you need to email your, um, your teacher and ask them to invite you uh, to your scholars account. So I'm going to share you from the share from the, the um, teacher side, what this looks like. Um, and so you can see in this class, I just have my daughter, and I've invited this email for guardian. So you have to you have to alert your teacher. It's not automatic. It doesn't pull it from Infinite Campus or anything like that. Um, and you can have multiple emails here. So if you have multiple people that need it, um, send multiple addresses, we can do that. All right. Then once you do that, it's going to send you 
an email and I just got this this morning. So let me pull it up on my email and share that with you. Give me one moment. And I got to share a different tab. So let me stop there. Okay. And hopefully, yes, that worked. All right. So you'll get an email. It says get Google Classroom email su summaries for your scholar's name. And then you'll just hit accept here in the middle. All right. And it's going to send me to a different tab. So I'm going to share that tab with you. Give me one moment. Oops, might have shared the wrong one. There we go. Got the right one. All right. So it just says accept here. I'm going to do that. All right. And then right here on the drop down is the important part. You can choose weekly, daily, or no summaries. Um, obviously, if you requested this, hopefully you'll choose weekly or daily. I recommend daily if that's the way you want to go. But weekly you'll send out on Friday afternoon. And daily is going to be sent out each afternoon to you. Um, and then you need to pick your time here. Uh, we're not in Detroit. Um, so we want to be not that way, this way, um, wherever it is. Sorry. I won't bother you with that. Um, then you just hit go and you're good to go. All right. So now I'm going to get daily emails for her um, in this uh, Detroit time zone, which is not the one I want. Let's go Eastern. All right. Questions on how to get emails from. So you said you said you were to email the teacher directly. Yeah, I would email them directly and say, "Will you please add me for uh, Google Classroom uh, updates?" And, and I'll, I'll, uh, it looks like all the emails I've gotten from the teacher have been through this through kind of the Fayette County or the. Uh, it's sent on behalf of the school district. So I'm not sure if I even have her direct email address unless I'm the only one not seeing it. That's all there right. A, a who's your, somewhere? Yeah, who's your teacher? Durham, Mrs. Durham. There is on our school webpage, there is, but I just put it in the chat for you, Brian. Thanks. Um, it was right now. No, that's that perfectly fine. You're like me. If you don't do it now, you'll forget about it. And, um, yeah. And so you can email them directly. Um, most of those email addresses are on our web page and I'll take you guys there uh, later after I do this last part. All right. So if there aren't any other questions there, I want to show you how to take a picture and take a video from a Chromebook. And I need to switch over to my Chromebook in order to do that. So it's going to show like I'm sharing from Alexis. Uh, so bear with me there. All right, everything looks good on my end. Somebody give me a thumbs up if you can see a little, looks like marble on top of the, is that working? All right, thank you very much. All right, so this is what your Chromebook will look like. Um, and so a lot of our assignments are asking for the scholar to do something or maybe they've drawn on their whiteboard and they need to share that um, because they don't wanna do it digitally. Um, so there's a quick way on your Chromebook to take pictures with the camera. Uh, thanks, Ms. Boyd, for putting those others in there. Emily Heisel is the email that is the most difficult. There is another Emily Heisel in the district. Uh, so if you don't put that two in, then you will get uh, someone across the way at Wellington Elementary. Um, so uh, the way to go about this is to go in the lower left-hand corner and click on this Start button. And the launcher is going to bring up your last five things. And one of mine is the camera. But if the camera is not on yours, just hit this arrow and it'll bring up all of the different things that they can do. And you can see Zoom there, 
couple other things, your Google Drive, etc. But we want the camera and it should be one of your options. So you click there and it's gonna bring up the camera and now you guys can see me uh, sitting here. And there's a couple of different things going on here, but the main thing is over here on the right, there is a photo or there is a video button. So we can record videos here or we can uh, do photos. So if you're having your scholar do something, I know that Miss uh, Jacobs just had them try to do some art, outdoor art, and maybe they wanna take a picture of it and share it, or they wanna take a video of themselves with their art. You can use the Chromebook. You don't have to use your own phone or another device. Um, they can use this. All right, so super simple. If I wanna take a photo, just click the button. There it goes. Let me get rid of this. I know I'm sharing my screen. All right, and you can see the photo down here in the lower right-hand corner. If you quick click on it, it'll actually take you to your gallery where you can see all of your photos. You can name them, you can print them, you can actually even edit them. So you can crop out things if you'd like to. Uh, you can make them into different uh, items there. All right, so that's how you make it. And then it's just like, hey, how do I get that? Because it's a Chromebook and they don't have a hard drive on them, right? So it actually stores it in your files. So to get there, I'm gonna close out the picture here. You would come back down and click on the launcher again. And this time we're gonna choose the files location. And here's my recommendation. It's gonna be in the downloads. So under my files and downloads, you're gonna see the two pictures I've taken today. The quick way to make them live on in infamy is to just take them and drag them over to your Google Drive. And you can drop them in there. Okay. And so once you drop it into your Google Drive, now it's living in the cloud and I can access it under my Google Drive. All right. So I drop that picture in there. Hopefully it's a different one. All right. Or if it's a video, I drop it in there. Um, just remember that on the Chromebook, once you log out, then it's gonna delete that information if you haven't saved it. Uh, it does have some minimal memory, but not a whole lot. Um, and I think these are set to wipe that out. All right, so now what do I do? Well, if I'm doing an assignment, then I need to go back to my classes And sorry, this Chromebook's a little bit slower. And I wanna go in and go to an assignment that I have, and I'm gonna submit this picture as part of that. Um, let's do it right here. It says, please upload a screenshot or a picture of you. So I'm gonna view that. All right. And there was a Google slide here, but I want to unsubmit that because that's just silly. I don't want to make a copy. I want to delete that. I want to add or create, and I'm just going to go choose my Google Drive. So luckily, it's going to show the recent things um, that I have. And one of those just happens to be the picture that I just dropped into my Google Drive. Um, and so I hit insert and now I've added that image. And as you guys can see, I now have the turn in button and I can submit my assignment. So if your scholar has done everything on paper pencil or whatever, and they need to submit an assignment, that's a quick and easy way. Just have them um, to hold it up in front of their, their screen and uh, go about it that way. Videos take a little bit longer to upload, but you get the idea. Um, the one thing I didn't say at the beginning is Google Classroom is really just a shell front for Google Drive. Um, and so everything that they do in Google Classroom actually lives in their Google Drive. Um, and so let me, let me go there and uh, show you guys where all that stuff lives just so that you guys can find it if you ever need to to find it. Um, and my daughter will probably uh, 
persecute me when I get home for sharing her stuff. Um, but in Google Drive, you actually have a folder labeled classroom. And then within that folder, double click it there. Within that folder will actually be another folder for each of your classes. Um, and this actually lives on forever. Um, and so you can actually go back next year. You'll be able to access your classwork from this year um, and so forth. But let's just say I wanted to go to, uh, oh, where's my, there it is, classroom demonstration. And I open that folder up, you'll actually see all of my assignments sitting there in that folder. Um, so another quick way to access your scholars work um, is to come in here and find their assignment through the Google Drive rather than going through the classroom. Um, so if it's something from a long time ago and you're having difficulty finding it, you can actually just type in the assignment name in here um, and get to their work. All right, that is the end of my prepared um, items. What questions do you guys have um, or other things that you want me to address uh, today? I have a quick one. Can you pin the camera and the file to the taskbar at the bottom of your Google Drive, of your uh, Chromebook, so you don't have to search them every time? Can you have them appear um, on the bottom of the windows? It's there right now. Give me a second. Let me see if I can open up the camera and then see if I can pin it. I know you can pin the files, Brian, down there. I'm assuming we could probably do the camera. Let's see if I can two finger. Yeah, you can. Good question, Brian. So let me show that to everybody uh, to answer Brian's question. I'll have to share my screen again. Okay. So Brian was asking, can I get that camera to be across the bottom here rather than having to open up? And the answer is yes, you can. I've already pinned it, but I'll go ahead and show you um, how to pin it back. So the way to do that is to just open up the camera. And then when it loads on the bottom, you want to right click, but on the Chromebook, that's a two finger click. So put two fingers onto the, the keypad and click and you'll get these options right here. And if I hit pin, now it's gonna stay down there even if I close the camera out. Now it's just a quick click for your scholar. Here's where they can pop up the camera. Um, I also already had the files tab um, or the Google Doc button down there, but you could also do the same for the files tab. Sorry, I get those two confused. So I could go to files. Once it opens, I can double click there and I can hit pin. And now they're both there and I have quick access and I don't even have to use the launcher button. I can launch straight from there. So you can see I have the classroom button down here too. Um, and the Google Drive button and Chrome is open uh, there. So good question, Brian. Other questions you guys have? I'm trying to keep up. Oh, thanks, Jessica, for posting there in FCPS. Um, another thing I want to show you is the NTI 2DL uh, Tech Help site. Um, I know it got lost in translation for, for several people. Um, so let me do that. I'm going to knock her out of here. So if you go to Rise and you go to NTI 2DL right here and click, you'll get this tab. And on this tab are a couple of different things, but down here on the bottom right is tech support. And if you click right there, you'll get this tab. And you can see some different instructions, but this Google Classroom is kind of what we just went through, only about a nine minute clip um, of a, another gentleman going through it. But it has some different things here on how to submit assignments, submit pictures, how to get to your school email, um, Google Classroom, and so forth. And those can all be very useful um, as well for your needs. 
So that's another place to get some tech support uh, without having to call the school um, or flailing in the wind. <clears throat> All right, let's stop sharing. All right, anything else? So I have another question. Only Go ahead, Chris. I had 24 missing assignments to make up in week nine. So I'm trying to avoid this going forward, as I'm sure many others. Um, so when I just pulled up Stella's calendar, I've gotten emails telling me that there's assignments posted, but it's not in her calendar. It's not in her to do. It's nowhere listed where I can see it at the end of a day. Is this something you're working with the special teachers to start posting things there? Yeah, which can you give me a specific um, assignment and that way I can view it because I can see all of those things and I can provide a little bit better guidance on that. So it looks like there's a couple midterms that they have to do this week for art and humanities and for Spanish. No, those weren't done, but I do see a midterm posted for Mrs. Gaither. Okay. Um, and then yeah, and I one. just... I just Next. worked with Miss Gaither this morning. We were posting her stuff, so I think hers should be good. So I saw hers um, and Miss Young's, but otherwise, like her, Stella's calendar is fairly empty. So I just don't want to miss things in in six weeks. Be sure. And so out. for this week, um, the Spanish assignment is I think today's Spanish. Possibly, I can't remember the the rotation. Um, they won't post it until the day of their actual um, special. So okay. I'm not sure which one that is today. Um, I know PE is Monday. Yeah. Uh, I feel like outdoor STEM is today and then Spanish and then. You are correct. Is yeah, that you're correct, correct, Dr. Schroeder. I was going to ask if that was. So Monday um, being PE, then Tuesday outdoor STEM. So it wouldn't publish till today or this afternoon when they're scheduled to do that. And then arts and humanities and then Spanish. Now Thursday. those are actually on next week's calendar for us. Now is that the due date with that one week window? Um, 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 and that may be what it is. And that's where I'm just trying to make sure. Like yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at that. That's due next week. So they give them a week to get it submitted. So it was assigned so today. We, so where can we see where the assignments like has like I need to see when it's assigned because I don't want to be I don't, like doing it on the due date. I'd rather get it done if it was assigned today to be done next week. Is there a place we can look to see all of what is assigned to be done in the next week, I guess? Um, yes, that would be under your classwork tab. Um, for that okay. class. I, can, so I know I exactly what you're that. talking about, Dr. Schroeder. Yeah. Um, it's, Go ahead, I'm looking at it right now, and there is a section in the normal turn-in section you were talking about earlier, and it says mark is done. Now, we did ours already today, and I just realized that we didn't mark ours either. So um, I assume that would be the way to kind of fix those, is to go back and check is that mark is done? Uh-uh. Yes, I guess I'm not with her all day long. So it's 630 at night to go back and try to catch up is I guess I, I would like her to see at the beginning of the day what she needs to get done. I don't know. I, I guess it's, she just has to go into every class every time. Um, hold on one second. Let me share this other tab. I think I'm just so using, like the agenda the they come home with and it tells what they're supposed to do. And so being in the system for a couple of years now, that was my go-to. So just trying to figure out where a good spot is for them to see I, what it's due, when it's due. I think, yeah, I think this page right here would be your go-to because the home page that they fall on, it shows everything. Like since my midterm that I posted was not due until Sunday, then it shows you what's due in that class coming up. And so if there is nothing here, then that means there hasn't been any assignments and they have everything else submitted. Um, but like this one is due tomorrow. So I'm assuming that had been assigned before, uh, beforehand for Alexis, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this would be your go-to page um, with your, your specials would show up there and your, your main class. So you would have five of these across here. So this is where I would go at 630 and look and if nothing is showing that it's due today or due tomorrow or due next week, um, then that hasn't been assigned. But if the midterm was assigned today, then it would be posted here and it would have the due date um, for that one. So mine, that's what I'm saying. Mine isn't showing anything. Like, and I see it on the calendar. 
and I see it on the to-do list, but when I go to that general page under each of her classes, there's nothing showing. Yeah, mine's okay. the same way. So because the teachers aren't aren't doing it right yet, is that kind of what we talked about before? Is um, as they start assigning things as assignments properly and who's who's home room is she in? Them. So I can go to the outdoor STEM one for that class. She's and Gutierrez. Gutierrez. All right, let me go there and let me view it so that way I know and we're and talking I know about it's the all same new. Thing. I just want to make sure that we're getting the information so that we can get it done before the end of the semester, the term. All right, so I'm in Miss Gutierrez Outdoor STEM, and I see that this has been assigned and is due November 17th. Is that what you're seeing on your end for that assignment for Miss Gaither? Because this looks like an assignment to me. Um, sorry, I'm, you're going to see a different thing on my end because That's I'm in okay. the control. Under classwork, it shows it, but I guess under the classrooms tab that shows all the classrooms, it doesn't show it there. Mine doesn't either. Okay, let me add my daughter to this so I can view it from the other way. Alexis is gonna have so much homework. She hates me for this, by the way. <laughs> it's like, why are you messing with my stuff? All right. Let me share a different tab with you guys. And I realize you guys are seeing me twice here. I apologize. Can never get the right one. Share this tab. All right, so Miss Gaither's first grade is what we're looking at. Huh. That's interesting. I see what you're saying, and I'm not sure why it's doing that because it's put in as a assignment let me look at the editing assignment midterm do rubric i wonder if it's due so far out that it's not um showing up because it's more than a week away let me uh, let me change the due date on it quickly, and then see if that changes it. Might be a learning experience for me too. That's it. Okay, so it's not showing up if it's more than a week away. Um, and so since she had put the 17th down, which is next Tuesday, it's still, and at the end of the day, it's still showing it more than a week away. Um, and so it's not showing up on there. So I think I might go back to her and just have her put it due um, uh, at the end of Monday night rather than at the end of Tuesday night. Um, and that way it'll show up on the day of to solve that problem. So let me make that note. I'm sorry that's not showing up but i'm glad we figured that out if it's more than a week out it's going to be not showing up as due all right can you refresh your screen and see if it shows up as it showed up yep shows up now okay yeah. but like Ms. i'm glad we solved that on there anywhere is it just because you all haven't worked with i mean she hasn't gone through this process yet since it's new this week or uh with miss costner yes her, her assignment this week hasn't even posted that I'm okay, aware so, of. But we already got emailed yeah. about them. You did get email about this week's assignment? Yep, on Monday. Well, yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Let me... Uh... I'm, a, I'm only seeing past assignments for her that she hasn't posted this week's assignment. 
that's okay. due next week. Um, so I'll, let me, I'll check with her too. I'll just check with all the specials and make sure, um, because I'm going to tell them about this one week thing and make sure that they're assigning it. Um, so if they, if it's PE, I'm going to have her assign it for uh, Sunday evening at 1159 and that way it'll always show up okay. um, and so forth, working our way out. Okay. Okay. And then I have one last question. I promise I will not ask. No, you you're, more. you're good. Keep going. <laughs> So clever. And when we're talking about the time that children are supposed to be on there each week, um, is it my understanding that as a parent, we can't see how long they've been on or haven't been on? That is true. We have to print out a report on our end at the end of each week and then send it out. I talked with um, the Imagine Learning person um, and she basically reiterated that there's no way for the parents to access that and see. Um, so the teachers should be able to send it out at the end of each week as an update. Um, and I don't know from the student standpoint, if they can actually see from their account. Um, so maybe have your scholar log in. Um, I know at my house, we just have a timer and we set the timer and, uh, go that route. Uh, but I know that's not always, uh, as useful, um, or we'll tell you the whole story. And I know some of you aren't at home. Um, so I think the best way there is just to communicate with the teacher and ask them at the end of the week, if they haven't sent it out, if they could give you an update, um, and they can quickly pull that, um, from our end on the admin. Great. Thank you. No problem. Great questions. Thanks for helping us figure that one out. All right. Any other questions? All right. I appreciate all your questions and, um, your patience today and, um, I will say this, um, we're, we're obviously in unprecedented times, so we're accepting work whenever it's due, and we know that you guys have struggles as well in your own homes uh, to get those completed um, and to get them turned in. So we're not um, penalizing for late work or by any means uh, use it as a target uh, to get to. Looks like it's right at noon, which means it's time for lunch, part of the learn part, lunch and learn. Hopefully you guys got to eat. I'm going to sign off and uh, get some lunch.